On the train, Percy told Annabeth about his dream with the voice in the cavern. He mentioned the part, Help me rise, and I shall give you what you want. Annabeth didn't think that sounded like Hades, and if that was supposed to be like a deal, Percy shouldn't buy it, even if it was for his mom. So what would you do if it were your dad? he asked. I'd let him rot, she said. Okay, that was weird. Then she told him about how growing up was like for her before Camp Half-Blood. After she was born, Athena left her on her father's doorstep. He didn't want her, but Athena couldn't keep her. After all, being a god was too big of a job to be that close to your children. Demigods had to be raised by their mortal parent. Which would explain why Percy never saw his dad. When she was five, her dad married a mortal woman, they had mortal twins together, and pretended Annabeth didn't exist. By age seven, she finally decided to run away. Eventually, that's when she ended up joining Luke and Thalia. Percy felt sorry for her and wanted to help, but he had nothing. There were eight days left before the summer solstice, and the train rolled into St. Louis. The gateway arch was in sight, and Annabeth was dying to go over there. It may have been her only chance. A few minutes couldn't hurt, right? But when they got there, Percy couldn't help but feel like something wasn't right. And as you may have guessed, they took the elevator to the top of the arch and enjoyed the view. Annabeth had mentioned she wanted to grow up to be an architect to impress her mother. Might say creativity is one thing that comes out of being a child of Athena. When it was time to leave and everyone walked back into the elevator, there was no seat left for Percy. And they ended up leaving without him. But he wasn't completely alone. There was a little boy with his parents and the park ranger who was waiting for all who was left. There was also a lady with her dog that turned into a giant lion with a snake for a tail. The monster was called the Chimera. But that wasn't all. The lady revealed her hideous green form. Not to mention her forked tongue. The monster blew fire from its mouth at Percy, but he jumped out of the way. Unfortunately, a hole was blown in the wall leading out into the open, and Percy's pants were on fire. Not only that, but he dropped his sword, and it fell through the hole. There was nowhere to run, except maybe the river in front of the arch? As the son of Poseidon, could he survive the impact? Or maybe not, since it wasn't even part of the sea. He had to try. It was stupid, but he aimed for the water. Luckily, once again, Grover came to his rescue and caught him, but he couldn't hold on, and Percy fell into the water. Percy couldn't believe it. He was alive, and not only that, but he felt completely healed. He didn't even feel wet under the water, and he was breathing. Then he saw a water spirit, and she told him that there is hope for his mom, and that he must go to the Santa Monica beach before entering the underworld. She also said, don't trust the gifts, and disappeared before Percy could ask questions. When she was gone, he saw his sword, grabbed it, and swam up to the surface. Police and news reporters gathered around the area due to the blown hole in the arch. Luckily, it didn't take long to find Grover and Annabeth. They escaped the crowd, raced back to the train, and headed for Denver. By the time they reached Kansas, it was exactly one week before the summer solstice. When Percy mentioned the water spirit, Annabeth wanted to contact Chiron. But they couldn't use phones, because the thing is, as a demigod, using phones is like sending up a signal to monsters and letting them know where you are. I know. Weird. So, they looked for a place with water until they found a do-it-yourself car wash. They put in some change to activate the hose, and Grover pointed it in the air. The sprinkling water created a mist in the air, and with the sunlight, they made a rainbow. Annabeth held up a drachma and said, Oh dear goddess, please accept our offering. Then she threw it through the water, and it disappeared. After she said, Half-Blood Hill, the mist magically revealed an image of the camp. They saw Luke about three feet away. 
When he saw them, he told them there's been trouble with the other campers. Then Percy told him about the dreams he had. Luke tried to convince him it was Hades who took the bolt. He knew it was him because he saw him on Zeus's quarters on Olympus during the winter solstice, and he took the campers on a field trip there at that same time. Of course, gods couldn't take each other's magic items directly, but it had to be him. Then Luke asked Percy if the flying shoes had done him any good. Percy lied and said, They've come in handy. Then the hose timer stopped. Take care of yourself, Luke said, before he disappeared, and the water shut off. Minutes later, they walked into a diner. Before they could order anything, a tough-looking biker walked in and scooched into the booth. It's on me, he told the waitress. For some reason, maybe from the guy's attitude, Percy felt angry all of a sudden. He felt like hitting a wall or picking a fight with this guy just from feeling his presence. He couldn't have been human because the weird part about him was that there was a red glow behind his sunglasses. Then he realized he had the same vicious sneer that all the other campers in Cabin 5 had. This biker was Ares, the god of war. He said he needed a favor and mentioned he had a date in an abandoned water park and left his shield behind. Percy refused, but Ares reasoned with him and said if they do it, he'd tell Percy something he needed to know about his mom. He said the park was a mile west, and the Tunnel of Love Ride was the place to look. After he said to meet him back at the diner, he disappeared. I think it's a trick, so let's just go, Percy said. We can't, said Annabeth. I hate Ares as much as anybody, but you don't ignore the gods unless you want bad fortune. So, they headed for the park. It was called Waterland. Or Watrad, since letters were smashed. And the gate was chained. Grover said the magic word for the flying shoes, Maya, and flew over the fence while Percy and Annabeth climbed over. The park was definitely abandoned because there was garbage lying around and no water. They saw a ride decorated with hearts and statues. The Tunnel of Love. Lying in the empty pool was one of the boats, and in the seat was the shield. It all seemed too easy. There wasn't even any monsters around. I'm going down there, said Percy. He went down into the empty pool and reached over to grab the shield. But when he touched it, something happened. It was a trap! Cameras popped out of nowhere and broadcast it to Olympus. The statues moved and shot arrows at each other, creating a net and trapped Percy and Annabeth inside. Then from out of the walls crawled a swarm of scary, tiny, shiny, mechanical spiders. And boy, did Annabeth not like spiders. Percy picked up Annabeth and pulled her into the boat. Grover pulled on the ropes, but no dice. Then he saw a control booth and asked Grover to find the water switch, but he couldn't find the right one. Percy had to think fast. Then he remembered he's been able to control water even if it wasn't ocean water. And the pipes were right there. Then he tried to imagine waves, and the next thing he knew, water exploded out of the pipes. The water had so much force that when it hit the spiders, they burst. When the water level got high enough, it lifted the boat and the two demigods were carried into the Tunnel of Love. The boat zoomed down the tunnel like a rocket and they saw this exit in just seconds. But the opening was blocked with two other boats that were piled in front of it. Percy thought if they'd crashed, the force would send them flying straight over the barricade, and it worked. As soon as the boat crashed, they flew over the barricade and into the air. Luckily, Grover came to the rescue, again, and caught him. They weighed Grover to the ground, and now Percy was real angry with the Olympians. To tell by those cameras, they obviously made fun out of humiliating each other's children. But they didn't stick around to face more. When they made it back to the diner, Ares was on his bike, and Percy was real pissed with him. So you didn't get killed, said Ares. You look good on TV. You're a jerk. You knew it was a trap, Percy said to him, angrily. When he gave him the shield, Ares pointed out at a nearby truck. 
He mentioned the truck was heading for Los Angeles, making at least one stop in Las Vegas, and it was a zoo transfer. You're kidding, Percy said. Free ride west, punk. Now stop complaining, Ari said. Then he snapped his fingers and the truck's back doors magically opened. Then he gave him a bag containing fresh clothes, drachmas, and mortal money. Percy almost didn't accept that, but Grover thanked Ares for him. Then Ares gave Percy the info on his mom. She ain't dead, he said. She's in the underworld, but she's being kept hostage. You know, you're pretty smug for a guy who runs from Cupid statues, Percy said, still feeling angry with him. We'll meet again, Percy Jackson, said Ares. Next time you're in a fight, watch your back. And the war god zoomed away on his bike. That wasn't smart, Percy, said Annabeth. You don't want a god for an enemy, especially that god. Then they ran to the open truck, hopped in the back, closed the doors, and they were moving on. It was now June 14th, so the solstice was six days from now. Inside the truck, there was a zebra and a lion locked in cages, which did make Rover sad. Annabeth apologized to Percy for her reaction with the spiders. She explained to him about her fear of spiders because of the monster Arachne, who lost a challenge with her mom. And both Athena's and Arachne's children had been seeking revenge on each other ever since. Minutes later, Percy noticed the beads on Annabeth's necklace. All the campers had their own set of beads. Every new bead showed the campers survived a whole other year and always received a new one right at the end of the summer. The pictures on each bead represented the campers' biggest event they experienced during, their, during that particular year. Percy also noticed a college ring added to it. Annabeth said it belonged to her dad. It was mailed to her along with a letter saying that he missed her and was wishing she could come and live with him again but she knew her stepmom would hate that because of the possibilities of monsters. Don't give up, Percy said. You should try riding him back. Thanks for the advice, she said coldly. As soon as they made it to the fabulous Las Vegas, they freed the animals to distract the driver. Then they started walking down the streets to find food and a new transport. There was no rush, since the deadline was five days from now. Not to mention the small Lady Liberty made Percy homesick.